Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of Made to Stick by Chip Heath. Have you ever pondered why some products sell better than others and why this is the case? The majority of the time, it all comes down to the packaging. So what makes us think that our ideas are any different? In the film Made to Stick, the central question is why some ideas gain traction while others fall by the wayside. Despite the fact that substance is important in the world of ideas, spin and presentation are absolutely essential. If we can harness the power of narrative and storytelling, we can make ideas stick. This is something we see a lot in the world of conspiracy theories. Why is it that solid fact-based information has such a difficult time gaining traction, while ridiculous conspiracy theories continue to circulate despite the fact that they have no resources to back them up? This is due to the fact that they are compelling narratives. And narratives are much more memorable than complex jargon, don't you think? Let's see if this holds true by contrasting a story with a jargon. So grab a seat and prepare for story time. A man walks into a bar in a foreign city and orders a drink to take the edge off. He is then approached by an attractive woman who inquires as to whether he would be interested in another. This is the last thing he remembers before he wakes up the next morning in a bathtub full of ice, which is the last thing he remembers. He has a wound in his back, and a tube is protruding from the wound. He calls 911 and explains what has happened. When the operator answers, he is told that one of his kidneys has been harvested and he should not be alarmed. Let's take a look at some jargon with the help of the following quote. Comprehensive community building lends itself naturally to a return on investment rationale that can be modeled using existing practice. It's an extreme comparison, but it's necessary because the story of kidney harvesting is so compelling. Which of the two stories, the kidney heist story or the jargon, is the more straightforward to retell? Even though the majority of us could recall the specifics of the story, almost none of us could recall the quotations jargon heavy language. So, what does this tell us about ourselves? Dan Heath is an educational publisher who has conducted extensive research into what makes teachers effective in their classrooms. Chip, his brother, is a social science professor at Stanford University. It was the concept of stickiness, as explained by Malcolm Gladwell in his book The Tipping Point, that left an impression on both of them. The premise of stickiness is that it is important to understand why some ideas stick in the mind while others do not. Made to Stick outlines the most important characteristics of stickiness, as well as the factors that cause ideas to stick in our minds. Also discussed is how we can design our communication so that people are aware of, care about, and respond to what we are saying to them. This is the book to read if you want to ensure that your ideas are effectively communicated and remembered by others. We'll look at the curse of knowledge and how to overcome it using strategies provided by our authors in a brief discussion following that. After establishing the criteria established by our authors, we'll dissect the art of achievement and communication by employing the mnemonic, Sukse. But first, let's play a little game. Try playing the tapper and listener's game with a friend the next time you're together. The object of the game is for you to tap out the rhythm of a song without telling your friend what it is called. See if your friend can guess what it is called. Make a simple song like Happy Birthday the background music and see how easy it is for your friend to sing along to it. You'll probably be surprised to learn that this game isn't as simple and straightforward as it appears, and that you'll have difficulty guessing many well-known songs, despite your efforts. This game was invented by psychologist Elizabeth Newton in 1990 and played with students at Stanford University. She asked someone to tap out the rhythm of a song, and then she had another person try to figure out what it was. Almost every time, the listener was unable to identify the song. Only one out of every 40 students was able to correctly identify the song that the tapper was tapping. The tappers, in an interesting twist, predicted that at least half of those who were listening would guess which song they were tapping. Because the tappers are singing along to the song in their heads, they naturally expect others to understand what they're trying to communicate with their movements. However, the person who hears the taps will not be able to hear the song that is playing in the other person's head and will therefore have no idea what the taps are referring to. This single experiment serves as an illustration of what is known as the curse of knowledge. In communication with others, the curse of knowledge refers to a cognitive bias that occurs when we assume that the other person has the necessary background knowledge to understand what we are saying. It is referred to as the curse of expertise in some circles. When we have insider information that others do not have, it means that we have already framed our idea and determined its relevance, and that we are communicating under the assumption that our audience has the same understanding as we do. As a result, our communication may become either confusing or boring. The more we learn about a subject, 
the more we become engrossed in the details, statistics, facts, and abstracts, and we lose sight of the essence of what we are attempting to communicate in the process. As a result, we struggle to communicate our ideas in a way that makes them stick in the minds of those who hear them. Three principles must be followed in order for our ideas to become sticky. First and foremost, our ideas must be comprehended, second, we must devise a method of making them memorable, and third, people must be eager to share them with others. Successful communication is straightforward, unexpected, concrete, credible, emotional, and frequently involves the use of a story as a vehicle. Our authors investigated what makes for effective communication and discovered that the stories, advertisements, and ideas that spread like wildfire all have six distinguishing characteristics in common. Naturally, our authors employ the mnemonic succès to aid in the retention of these fundamental principles. Let's take a quick look at this. The letter S stands for simple. We are frequently instructed to keep it simple. In this step, we want to reduce our concept to a single, straightforward statement. We should identify the central concept that underpins the idea and state it clearly. However, it is straightforward. Even though it can be tempting to go into great detail when explaining a concept, going into too much detail can be counterproductive when it comes to developing ideas that stick in the mind. To be effective, we must communicate in a straightforward manner that others can understand and remember. However, do not confuse simplicity with ease. It takes considerable skill to convey the essence of any idea in a few words without misleading the audience or changing the meaning of the message we are attempting to convey. This is a skill that journalists are taught to master, and they are taught how to create headlines that capture the essence of an article in only a few words. Our authors encourage us to take ideas from the best in the business and apply them to our own situations. Make use of the inverted pyramid technique that was popularized in journalism. The inverted pyramid is a structure used by journalists to organize their articles, with the most important points appearing first, followed by tailoring the article and finally adding the finer details. Prioritization is forced as a result, and our idea is simplified and clarified as a result before we dive into the details. Consider the following straightforward slogan, Southwest Airlines is referred to as the low-cost carrier. Those four words serve two purposes, they make running the airline more efficient and they inform customers on board about what to expect if they choose to fly with Southwest Airlines. Co-founder Herb Kelleher stated that every decision must be made with the goal of meeting this concrete and simple goal in mind. When deciding whether or not to serve dinner on flights, the question always comes back to whether or not it will help Southwest maintain its position as the low-cost airline. Their primary concern is not passenger comfort, but rather keeping costs as low as possible. So that's a definite no in terms of dinner plans. Customers will find this slogan to be catchy, simple to understand, and easy to remember. A complicated breakdown of their prices in comparison to other airlines would be quickly forgotten and would fail to make an impression on the audience. The letter U stands for unexpected. In order to communicate effectively, the first requirement is to attract attention, and the second is to maintain it. We can learn to capture people's attention by incorporating elements of surprise and curiosity gaps into our presentations. Pretend you're in the following situation. Your flight is taking off, and the flight attendant is delivering the standard pre-flight safety spiel. Assuming you aren't an inexperienced flyer, you are probably familiar with the script, and as a result, you aren't paying close attention when it comes to the technicalities of putting on an oxygen mask. But what if the attendant abruptly deviates from the script and says something completely unexpected and unrelated in the middle of the speech? While there may be 50 ways to leave your lover, there is only one way to get off this plane, someone once said. It is likely that our attention will be captured immediately. When confronted with the element of surprise, our brain is jolted out of autopilot mode and into manual control, and we give our full attention to this unexpected shift in focus. We can also use curiosity gaps to attract and maintain our audience's attention. Is it your favorite pastime to read detective novels or watch crime films that keep you guessing right up until the very last scene? The reason for the success of these thrillers is that they keep us guessing, they play to our insatiable desire to fill the void left by our lack of curiosity. Curiosity is our intellectual need to find answers to questions and to fill in the gaps in our knowledge. This technique is well suited for local television news broadcasts. It is possible that a presenter will begin by saying, there is a new drug sweeping the teenage community, and it may be in your medicine cabinet. The story that follows these commercials. When we present our ideas, the key is to identify and fill in the gaps first, rather than succumbing to the temptation to start with the facts. It is said by the Heath brothers that before a message can stick, the audience must want to hear it. Concrete is represented by the letter C. Ideas that are concrete tend to stick. As an example, 
The terms bicycle and avocados are more easily visualized and remembered than abstract concepts such as justice and personality. The problem is that the more we learn about a subject, the more abstract our thinking and communication become. When the curse of knowledge rears its head, we resort to the use of superfluous jargon or conceptual explanations in order to communicate our message. Take into consideration the following fact, was it ever brought to your attention that a bag of movie popcorn made with coconut oil contains 20 grams of saturated fat? This may strike you as unhealthy, but is this statement enough to motivate you to switch to a more nutritious packet of popcorn instead of the unhealthy variety? Most likely not. What many people don't realize is that a medium-sized butter popcorn at a typical neighborhood movie theater contains more artery-clogging fat than a bacon and eggs breakfast, a Big Mac with fries for lunch, and a steak dinner with all the trimmings, all combined. Although the facts are the same, the information has been presented in a more concrete and visual manner. The latter, more concrete statement was used by American health organizations to raise awareness about the health risks associated with consuming popcorn in this manner. Surprisingly, their marketing strategy was successful. Eventually, coconut oil was phased out of major American movie theater chains in favor of more nutritious alternatives. Factual statements can be too bland, abstract, and academic to make an impression on the minds of those who hear them. Concrete explanations, on the other hand, are more likely to be remembered and to inspire behavioral change. It is much easier for our audience to understand, remember, and pass on our ideas if we use vivid and sensory descriptions. Credible is represented by the letter C. What if I told you that bacteria is the cause of ulcers? This remarkable finding was made by two medical researchers in the 1980s, bacteria are responsible for ulcer formation. The only problem was that no one seemed to believe what they were saying. They lacked credibility, as they put it. In addition, neither of their credentials was considered strong enough, and one of the researchers was not yet a licensed medical professional in their home country of Canada. It took a decade before their findings were accepted, and it was only after that that they were awarded the Nobel Prize. Our statements can be easily dismissed if they do not appear to be true and we do not have the necessary authority to back them up. While stress ulcers are not recommended, there are several strategies for appearing credible and persuading people to change their beliefs, even if we do not have the authority to back up our claims. A total of three techniques are available, use an anti-authority, rely on statistics, and rely on testable credentials. Let's take them one at a time and go over them. No one needs to tell us that smoking is bad for us, we already know it from experience. A woman who appeared frail and elderly in an anti-smoking campaign was about to undergo her second lung transplant. She was only in her late 20s at the time of her death, which is truly shocking. As a result of her smoking habit, which she began when she was 10 years old, her health had suffered significantly. Her physical appearance alone provided support for the notion that smoking is harmful to one's health. Statistics can be a very effective credit builder. Our authors, on the other hand, caution that while facts and figures can be used to illustrate a point, they should be used in such a way that they paint a clear, concrete picture for your audience. In his writing, for example, author Stephen Covey emphasizes the importance of teamwork. He attempted to persuade the audience with dry statistics such as, only 37% of employees had a clear understanding of the company's mission. However, he soon realized that speaking concretely had a greater impact than speaking abstractly, so he rephrased his idea by using a soccer analogy. Only 4 out of 11 soccer players would know where the goal was if the team had the same makeup as the one in question. By employing this analogy, he was able to ensure that his point was understood by everyone in the audience. The third technique is to use credentials that can be verified. Wendy's fast food restaurant chain coined the slogan Where's the Beef? in 1984 to promote their products. The advertisement implied that Wendy's hamburgers were larger than those of their competitors, and that the other burger chains had more abundant burger on their buns. Consumers put this thought-provoking question to the test and confirmed it for themselves, resulting in a resounding success for the campaign. Personal experience can be a very effective tool for shifting beliefs. Emotional is represented by the letter E. In order to raise funds to combat poverty in Africa, the Heath brothers believe that we should take one of two approaches. We could present the statistics that show that millions of African children die every day as a result of malnutrition, or we could show a photograph of a child who is in desperate need of assistance. Factual information and numerical data appeal to our analytical nature, and we may consider making a financial contribution to an important cause. However, according to the findings of the study, we are less likely to donate to African poverty than we are to sponsor a particular child. Even though a photograph of a child in need is just as credible as statistics, it appeals to our more emotional side of the brain. 
Emotions are extremely effective at conveying the significance of a concept. People take action because they are moved to do so by something they have seen or heard. As a result, when we see a human being in distress, we are moved to action. According to Mother Teresa, if she looks at the congregation, she will never act. I'll take a look at the one, I say. When it comes to getting people to take action, the message is to avoid using dry statistics and instead elicit emotional responses from them. Story is represented by the letter S. We're a species that thrives on narrative. Stories can elicit strong emotions while also motivating people to take action. The true story of Jared Fogel resulted in significant financial gain for the fast food corporation Subway. Jared struggled with his weight for a long time. Subway, on the other hand, came to the rescue. He tried one of their sandwiches and liked it, so he came up with his own Subway diet. Three months later, he had lost nearly 100 pounds by eating two sandwiches a day for three months. It piqued the interest of Subway's marketing team, and following the success formula, they transformed it into one of their most successful advertising campaigns. In its advertising, Subway told an unexpected but straightforward story, fast food isn't healthy and can be a contributing factor to weight gain. Because it is based on a personal anecdote, the story is concrete and credible. It's also emotional because it's a story about a person who overcame personal weight-related issues through their own efforts. So here's some food for thought. While a catchy slogan can be effective in gaining attention, nothing compares to the power of a well-told story. Finally, I'd like to say. Chip and Dan Heath teach us why some ideas catch on and why others don't in this surprisingly humorous book. They dissect the anatomy of what makes ideas stick, as well as how to make them even more sticky. This book teaches you how to slim down your ideas in the same way that a good diet does. Simply put, SUKSE is an acronym that can assist us in making our ideas stick in the minds of others so that they can act on them or share them long after we have presented them. As a result, the next time you want to present an idea, consider it as if it were a potential bestseller. Simple titles are best, but you can also include an unexpected twist, use concrete and credible examples, elicit emotional responses, and tell the most captivating story you can think of. And, hopefully, it will be the topic of conversation for everyone soon. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.